Good morning, everyone. How are you? Great. Happy Father's Day to those of you who are celebrating, also known in um, some circles as National New Polo Shirt and Necktie Day, right? Um, I did a little bit of research to find out what gifts uh, men would really like to receive. Uh, so, anybody have an idea? Top three. Golf clubs? That was, that was a little, for, I read the top 10. That was in the top 10. Top three? Who said tickets to Ravens? Lois, yeah, sports tickets was number two. Okay, number three, I don't get, oh, John in the back. You're right, that would have been number two, or sports tickets. Number three, I don't get this, but some of you can relate, meat. <laughs> Nothing particular, just meat. <laughs> so, and the number one gift that um, apparently men would like to receive for Father's Day would be lawn services. <laughs> so, yeah, not spa services, that's Mother's Day, lawn services. So, um, I don't know if we can help you out with the sports tickets today, but if you stop by the gift card table, I think you could probably get some gift cards for one of the local steakhouses. Um, and I know that our youth are still looking to work as a green team to do yard work and that kind of thing so that they can earn money for mission trips. So you could still pull that off and you want to tuck those in alongside the new polo shirt and necktie. That's great. Folks, these past few weeks here at Glenmar Church have been full of celebration and excitement, a busy time in our lives. There's been um, a wedding, we've had graduations. Friday night, I sent off the um, graduating class from our early learning center, the four-year-olds who were moving into kindergarten. That was a big celebration. And of course, um, other graduations in our community and ordinations for our church. These have all been big events of change and transition, times of new beginnings. Well, this weekend is my last time in front of you. I'm taking some time off and preparing to move on to St. John United Church in Columbia on the 1st of July. I have been busy kind of wrapping up ministry and boxing up my office so Reverend Cecil Mudede can move in at the end of this month. And I would say that all of this of the past few weeks has had me to fall way behind on my thank you notes. They are coming. But in the meantime, I would like to say thank you. Thank you very much for the cards, the phone calls, the expressions of appreciation, your prayers and your attendance with me in body and spirit on May 31st in downtown Baltimore for ordination, the wonderful celebration that took part here on that Friday evening to celebrate my next steps in ministry along with three other women of Glenmar Church, the beautiful stole I am wearing, which is a gift from you all, the hugs, the um, kind words, and the best wishes, and uh, thank you in advance uh, for the cake, I'm told. We will all be enjoying this afternoon or this morning um, after church. Truly, you are sending me off in Glenmar style, and it's making it a little hard to leave. Will you pray with me? Come now, Holy Spirit, in wisdom and truth, illumine our minds, enliven our hearts, kindle our imaginations, help us to hear the word you have for us today and to leave this place inspired for greater faithfulness as we follow Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in our text this morning, that my um, former professor, uh, Willa Red, some of you may not have known that. Um, perhaps no one's more surprised to see me standing here like than you are. No, you're not surprised, that's great. Willa was a professor in preparation for my first career and it's a joy to serve with you today. 
Willa just read a letter um, from the to the community of Colosseo. It was a text that I felt drawn to preach today. It is a scripture of acknowledgement of what God has done, an affirmation of who the people of Colosseo are, and an anticipation of who they will continue to be. It's from the Apostle Paul, who is one who has been supported in ministry by them, them and served alongside them. It's a message of gratitude and encouragement and hope. It's sometimes used at weddings. And so when I felt led to this text and kept coming back to it, I have to admit I was delighted as I started to research and prepare this message that I thought God had led me right to the place where I needed to be to bring a message to you today that's just perfect for what God has to say to the community of Glenmar. The writer, Paul, of this letter is reminding the Colossian community of who they are. That as Christians, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is so real and so fresh and so prevalent in their community that he is reminding them to live into the power and the presence of that new resurrected life. That they have died with Christ. Their old nature, the things that are not um, godly, that are not pleasing and accept, um, accepting and um, upbuilding of one another. Those things have died, and the things that are living and being raised up within them are the life-giving qualities and characteristics that Christ wishes us to have as well. And that while they continue to live as humans on this earth, they are called to live into a new way of life on their journey of faith. This community is urged that every time that they can, when they have the opportunity to recall their baptism and what it means, that their hearts and minds should be warmed and impressed with the reality that they have participated in both the death of Christ and the resurrection to new life. Now, I am about to depart. I am grateful to have been here. I am glad to have the opportunity to encourage Glenmar to continue to be faithful in its mission and vision with the great hope that lives will continue to be reached and the world will continue to be changed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I expect that even though we will have some sad moments of goodbye, that our parting is more of a chance to celebrate new beginnings and the continuation of what God is doing in each of us, much like we do at weddings and graduations. So I move on to another church in Columbia, Maryland, and you prepare to welcome Pastor Cecil. And so, community, the message for you today starts at an extraordinary point. Remember that you are holy. You are loved. You are valued. You are chosen by God. Not because of who you are or what you have done, but because of who God is and what God has done. Now, you certainly have done some wonderful and generous and loving things, but it is because God loved you first. It's not of your own doing, but it is what God is doing in and through you. And our scripture says that God's love shows up in ways like compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Well, friends, you enveloped you embraced me with all of those expressions of God's grace as I stepped into Glenmar Church four years ago, sometimes found myself immersed in ministry. And I admit at times it felt even swallowed up in the largeness of Glenmar Church. But with all of those qualities within you, you did something more. You put on the love that God calls us to, 
the love that covers all things, that agape love that says, I care about and I want to serve you more than I care about and want to serve myself. And you revealed it to me and you continue to reveal it to one another. We've been through a lot of changes and growing pains in the past four years. In fact, we've been through so many changes in the past four years that we made it a ministry, right? We called it the transition team. And in that time, as we've lived into this place and God's call to reach into the community, we've learned how to bear with one another through life together. Oh, sometimes we've grumbled and complained um, as we've been side by side and rubbed elbows and bumped into one another uh, from time to time. But we've also forgiven one another when we haven't been at our best. And all of this is because ultimately we remember who God is and what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. We remember the words in 1 John um, chapter 4, chapter 1 verse, uh, not 1 John, chapter 1 of John verse 14, where the message puts it like this, the word, that would be the living word, became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We remembered that God loved us enough to come and walk among us and show us, as is sometimes said, love with skin on. We remembered that when we weren't capable of doing things right and saving ourselves, we believed that God could make things right. We remembered that God saved us by dying for us while we were still sinners and that we had the power to live above and beyond that. We believed that in the resurrection, God showed us that no matter what we might go through here, God is still God and has the final answer. And the answer is new life. The answer is yes. It is that we can never tear down or destroy what God wants to bring about. And that even when we sometimes get things wrong, God can make it right. Yes, when... Um, the rules and the procedures and the policies and the guidelines that we've set up to kind of help organize our life here together at church started to feel more uh, trapping and constraining than freeing for ministry. We've reminded one another of the greatest rule. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second, like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And we have let that ultimate rule of God's love take root in us. We've taught one another and learned together. We've sang and worshiped together. And we have tried for our words and actions to be done in ways that honor God because we are followers of Jesus Christ. And as God began to fulfill the vision for Glenmar Church to be a church which reaches this community, we felt God work in mighty ways. We've received the people who have come of all nations, ages, and races. We've received people who have come back to church after a long time or come for the first time. We've received people who have come from other Protestant denominations and even other faith traditions. And when they have asked, what does it mean to be part of Glenmar Church and a follower of Christ in the United Methodist tradition, we did not get all tied up in our differences and what they did not know. We said, it's this simple. And our founder, John Wesley, gave us away, and it's three simple rules. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. See, we remember that ultimately God's love rules over yesterday, today, and forever, even in the midst of the changes and transitions all around us. And by God's grace, 
our lives have intersected for the past four years. We have journeyed together, and we've seen God at work. When I came here four years ago, I had just graduated from seminary. I had never worked at a church full time. I'd never been in a church where I had to change clothes in between the worship services. And you had me to come right in and roll up my sleeves and get to work. You told me stories from your history, and you made sure that I knew all of the leaders in ministry and mission. You celebrated my ordination, where I received the gift of this stole from you, and you prayed for me. And you taught me about praising God, growing disciples, and serving the world. When I came here, I had never organized a whole community of small groups. I had never planned a church-wide study for 200 people, some which were led in Chinese. I'd never been on a week-long construction mission trip. I'd never baptized an adult or someone who was born beyond the United States. I had never celebrated the sacrament of Holy Communion in six different languages. I had never been in on the ground floor startup of an early learning center which would reach 140 families. These were not things of my doing. These were not things of your doing. Thanks be to God, this has all been God's work within and through you. And these are tasks which you entrusted me with and I shared with you and learned to do through Glenmar Church. And you've also taught me by your personal examples. I have been privileged to be invited into your lives, sometimes into the inner moments of life where you have been most vulnerable, moments of your own change and transition, joy, and loss. Whether it was sitting in my office or a coffee shop or even walking the length of our parking lot, you have told me your stories. You've spoken of moral strength and deepening faith. You have shared your deep wounds and heavy burdens, your greatest questions, and you have allowed me to pray with you. I have learned and grown and been inspired by these encounters with you. And now the time has come for me to move on. And so I leave here with deep gratitude and hope for you. I'm excited about what lies ahead for me and for you. And it is hard to say goodbye. One of the things I will miss this year is being able to go back to the mission trip um, in Hurley, Virginia. I really enjoyed my time there last year alongside our youth and Paul Barons as we shored up the foundation footers of a front porch and built a ramp in the 98 degree heat. Wait, did I say that I enjoyed that? <laughs> oh, well, we ate breakfast with a homeowner on that front porch and we watched fireworks together from the top of a mountain, and well, I enjoyed that. I let young men and women the ages of my own children show me how to use a nail gun and a power saw and to remember to always measure at least twice before cutting once. We talked and we laughed and we prayed together and we discovered a similar love for 70s music in our car rides. I'll miss that this year. I realize how I have come to love you and how thankful I am to have served with you and that it is hard to leave from here. But with great hope, I am certain that God who began the good work within you will see it through and continue it 
until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So it was with the Colossians. Ministry continued on. Life continued on. The community became an encouragement to others as the Apostle Paul encouraged them. And I know that fruitful ministry is going to continue here at Glenmar and with Pastor Cecil because God has chosen you. God has called you to do so, and God is faithful, and you are faithful to the rule of God's love in your lives. And I also trust that God has called me, and so I say yes to God's leading me forward from this place as we each in our own way go about praising God, growing disciples, and serving the world. We are the church that roots people in the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. And wherever we go from here, we trust that the Spirit of God goes with us because it is the resurrected Christ that lives within us. As your pastor for community life here, I have hoped that you would be filled with the knowledge and the love of God that changes lives and the whole world. Continue to grow in the love and peace of God as you do everything in the name of Christ. Your life together in community is part of your discipleship, praying, studying, caring, and serving one another. It will change you and it will change the world for God's sake. I also hope that you will help the children and the youth of this church to continue to know who God is and for what wonderful purpose they have been made. I'm so happy that Glenmar Church supports families, ministries for children of God of all ages, so that everyone may come to know the love of God in Jesus Christ. This morning, we are going to recall what God has done through the sacrament of baptism. We will remember how faithful God has been with all of us in the past and is with us now and will be with you in the future as a community where God's love rules. I realize I was drawn to this passage um, and led spiritually um, because in it I found that it contains the mission statement for Glenmar Church, uh, praising God, growing disciples, and serving the world. If you didn't hear it, listen now. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. That's growing. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. That's praising. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And that's serving the world. And so, Glenmar, be the church who's rooted by God's word in the life-giving message of Jesus Christ. Continue to reach others in a hurting world in need of knowing that God's love rules over everything. Thanks be to God. Amen.